welcome everyone. Uh, today in our success meetup, we are going to talk about cool automations that you might not know about. So I'm pretty excited about today um, because there are a lot of things that KV Core can do to automate uh, automate things, right? So take things off your plate. That's one of the biggest things that KV Core does. So as we go through today, I do have an outline available for us. Let me send that link out to anyone who wants it. So if you are here live with me, there is the link for you. If you are watching the YouTube replay, it'll be down below in the description so you can see it from there as well. Uh, also, registering for these events, you can register from the live training calendar right from within KV Core, or if you're on our YouTube, if you scan that QR code that you can see, that's also where you can find our registration link. So lots of ways for you to register. We want you to be informed, connected, and all of that good stuff. And finally, we also have a Facebook group. So if you are not a part of that Facebook group yet, definitely recommend joining the link to that is right within uh, that outline so you can see it in there as well. In that Facebook group, that's where we announce the upcoming topics. You can always request a topic either in there or live on one of these webinars. We are very happy to uh, teach you whatever you want to learn about. Um, awesome, awesome. Welcome, Larry, from your iPhone. Um, yeah, stay as long as you want, as long as you can. Um, and you can always catch the replay on the YouTube channel or within that Facebook group. Okay, so if you have been on any trainings with me, you know that I am very passionate about the KV Core system. Uh, it's truly a powerful tool and it can really help grow your business. Now it does all kinds of things, you know, it runs your website, there's lead generation, there's so many things that it can do. Um, but my favorite, part of what it does is it nurtures your leads. And so it takes care of the things that can be really easy for us to look over. Now, a lot of the automations you probably already know about, right? These are like, here's a, a list of automations. Feel free to take a screenshot of it. These are some of our more commonly known and commonly talked about automations. Um, and so we're not gonna really dive into those today. Like search alerts, we have a million webinars on those already. Same things with smart campaigns. Those will be for another day, um, especially our big three, right? Our big three of search alerts, market reports, smart campaigns. Like we have so, so many webinars on those, um, especially if you check out our YouTube playlist with all of our KV Core success meetups, which I just put that link in. Um, or if you've seen our playlist, which I am a big fan of, which is the um, Mastering KV Core, uh, which you've probably already seen if you have been on our YouTube channel in any way. So we aren't really going to talk about these three things today. Okay, we'll talk about them some other time. What we are going to talk about are some lesser known automations. Uh, I think they're really cool. That's why we're talking about them today. So the first one to talk about is contact validation. Contact validation is something that KV Core does automatically, right? Automations today. So the contact validation is Whenever new contacts are added into KV Core, so whether that's from a space page, a landing page, um, smart social leads from the marketplace, even a bulk import, or you manually adding them, whenever a new contact comes into the system, uh, data validation is run automatically. There's also a little button you could push to rerun it. I'll show you how to do that too. So this is going to look through uh, various online services and it's going to look for uh, the name, the email address, or any other contact info to cross-reference it with all different kinds of sources of 
of data, right? This has to be publicly available data. So that is something to know about because um, usually when you are online uh, and you are, you know, purchasing through uh, different shops or creating some social media accounts or, you know, all kinds of things that you do online, um, there's usually terms page terms and agreement that you have to click yes to and basically a lot of those are saying like okay we're gathering your contact info uh, and and so you know, something to know about um, and so we tap into a third-party database of all that information it's cross-referenced with what's out there um, we'll look and see like does this email address have a name with it right with a lot of our uh, lead generation tools we don't ask for names because People don't always want to give their name, um, but they might give you an email or a phone number or something else. Uh, the more you ask from someone, the less likely they are to, to give you the things. And so, you know, statistically and through studies, if you don't ask for names, you're more likely to get people to register, which can then be an issue for you. Like you want that name. Um, there's all kinds of places that you could go look white pages, uh, you know, do some skip tracing, you know, things like that to uh, find these people, but we do some of that too. So, you know, if someone enters in their info and we're able to cross-reference it, we can, you know, pull in a phone number, pull in a name, things like that. So that all happens automatically. Um, we're also going to check and see their email address. So we can't check and see like if something is necessarily real right off the bat. So like Christina's email at gmail.com. Please don't email that. That's probably belongs to a person. Um, but so something, something like that, we can see that that's a real email. We don't necessarily know that that's like who this lead is, um, but we will look for like misspellings. Like they spelled Yahoo um, or, you know, Gmail. Like people spell you know, Gma, they leave off the L all the time. So we'll look for stuff like that too, to see if we can um, you know, er erase that, make sure you have good data. So. That is contact validation. So I love this because again, a lot of lead sources don't ask for names. And so hopefully we're able to find that information for you. We can also find things like, you know, we might find their Facebook page or you know, I've definitely seen ones that pull up with MySpace or you know different things like that, other social media. And so that gives you another opportunity to engage with them. Right, I might put into my workflow, a new lead comes in, I check their validation. If I see social media, I'm gonna go and connect with them on those social media pages. So that's something that, um, that, you, can, that you can do and add kind of into your own, uh, your own process. And again, if, if either it hasn't been run in a while or if you, um, for some reason it didn't run, which isn't normal, uh, you can always click a button and, and have it run. So. Let's just look at that real quick. So if I look at a lead or a contact, so I'm gonna look at Stephanie here. Here in the uh, lead detail page, the top right corner ish is gonna have their name. And right next to it, I have this like big green ribbon. <laughs> but that means that yes, lead validation has been run for this person. So I know that I'm good to go. If I wanted to, if it was gray, that's how I would know that it hasn't been run yet. Again, you usually won't find that it's gray. You'll, you're usually going to find that it's green. Um, some other things that we're going to validate, you'll see in the other, the rest of the contact here. So if there's one next to the phone number, right? So this we're seeing as gray, um, which means there hasn't been validation run on the phone number, or we did run that validation and it was found to not be a good number. So that's what we found. Same thing with this email address. This has been validated because we've sent out an email and so things like that. Now, if this was gray and I wanted to kind of force this through, I just click on that little shield. You can see it thinking. You can see it's run validation again. Let me adjust my computer. And validation was run. We didn't find any details because this is a fake lead. I made it up. This is a, this is a fake email address. But that's lead validation. Um, you'll see that right there in the timeline. Usually if you have a lead or a contact in your KV Core account and you scroll all the way down to the beginning, which this is one of my demo leads and I have had it in here for a long time. So um, 
let me go to a newer lead. Just to kind of show what that looks like. Oh, and now it's thinking. Here we go. So if I go to like one of my brand new, brand new leads, Olivia here, and I scroll to the beginning of our history together. So they looked at a property, they came in with some hashtags, they went to an open house, and there was validation was run. So I can see that. Um, you can also, if you don't want to scroll, you can also search through the timeline. So if I just wanted to see validation and hit enter, it'll show me that too. So that's kind of cool. It's all, all right there for me. So that's, that's lead validation happens automatically. It's really valuable because a lot of lead sources don't ask for names. So we do, again, just automatically look for any lead sources uh, that, that are public, that are available to us. That's one cool little automation. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is the lead star rating system. So the lead star rating system is where KV Core adds like a predictive score to this person. Because with, with leads, you know, you might get the people who are just looking, you might get the people who are, are looking but never actually talk to you. Um, maybe you purchased uh, a, a list of, of homeowners, maybe you went to your title rep and got, you know, a list of homeowners from them. Yeah, all kinds of ways for leads to get into your KV Core account, right? Um, so sometimes we don't always know like, who's a high quality lead or who I should be um, spending time with right now. And sometimes those people that, and I shouldn't say high quality because you might think someone is a low quality lead, but the reality is they're just at the very beginning of their life cycle, right? They're at that 18, two years away from that home purchase. And so again, KD Core's job is to keep people warm for you, right? So that way you don't have to like, you know, I, I get it. You get a lead that's like two years away and you're like, well, I wish I was getting paid tomorrow. So, so I get it, but it doesn't mean they're a bad lead. It just means they're not going to give you that transaction now, but hopefully we're all in this for the long game. Right. If you got into real estate for like six months of quick money, I got news for you. You're, <laughs> you're in the wrong spot um, lovingly. So, you know, some of these leads, a lot of these leads, they take time to build up that relationship. And so the lead star rating is behind the scenes, analyzing things to move them from a one star to a five star. So it's out of five stars. Okay, now you can click and you can say, okay, I already know, you know, this is a referral. So I already know that they're like a four star lead. So I'm just going to click four. You can do that. So you can definitely kind of like update these stars on your own. Um, but you'll also, if you don't click, then we will update it for you behind the scenes. So this is going to show you, um, you know, if they like save a listing, they'll get another star. If, you know, so these stars are indicating that they are closer potentially to buying or selling. So like if I'm in my KV Core account and I look at my smart CRM and let's just look at my prospects, right? My prospects are people who aren't really talking to me. I did, again, all my data is fake. So just a reminder, um, but if I look at my prospects and apply that filter, I can even look in my data table. So this data table, there's a lot of things that I can look at, right? I can organize by any of these columns here. The default, just so you all know, is that the newest one is on top. Um, you can click any of the columns with the little arrows and reorganize. So let's say I wanna look at my prospects and look, you know, kind of reorganize that. So my highest rated prospect is three stars. That's normal. Um, prospects are people who are not really talking to you yet or they're like long-term leads. That's really what I expect is that my prospects are usually gonna be two, maybe three stars. Um, if I did find a four star in here in my prospect list, I'm gonna call them, text them. They're gonna go on to like, if I have like a put a warm leads camp smart campaign, I'm going to put them on that because their habits, KV Core is analyzing them as being closer and closer to being ready to buy or sell. 
So you can change these stars, right? So Cassie, let's say like, okay, Cassie and I are having a lot of outside of KV core conversation, right? Maybe she's in a networking group. We talk a lot there. And so I'm going to bump her to a four star and I'm then going to change her to an active lead, right? Because we're actively communicating now. So sometimes you want to take control of those stars, but just know if you update the stars, we will no longer update them. I say that one more time. If you manually update the stars, we will no longer update them just for that one person, not for everyone, um, or just for that one person. You also can look at, you know, if I look at Trisha here on the left-hand side in like all these details, I can see under insights what her star rating is, okay? So the star rating, um, First, we do like that validation, of course. That's the initial way that we do those that rating. So we'll look at things like, do they have a valid email? Did they give you both an email address and a valid property address? Um, is there a phone number and an email address? That's gonna give them one star. So we look at a lot of different things and different uh, data to see you know, what what we think, right? So you might want to validate, like you'll know, look at that that email address. Did they forget the M on .com? Should I update that? Because then that will update their star rating. Um, things like that. So we'll look at you know. There's some very specific things that's in the support article. So let me just just read through this together. Um, so the length of their residence right? Because sales cycles, people statistically tend to stay in their home for about seven years. That's a, it's a little longer now, but about seven years. So if they have been in their home for one to three years, they get a star for that. If they've been in their home for three to eight years, then they're going to get an additional star. So they'll have two stars total. Um, if their last purchase price is below the current market estimate, they're going to get another star, right? So that makes sense because now they have equity in their home. Um, so that gives you gives you insight into what they might they might want to sell because there's equity available. Um, again, if they have a physical address and and an email, excellent because there's lots of ways to contact that person now. Um, if they don't have a physical address, that's okay. Um, you have them on search alerts, for example, and they are regularly looking at properties. Right, that gives them a star. Um, if they have, if they're talking to you, right? So if they are messaging you through the through the KB Core website, right? Asking you a question, requesting a showing, anything like that, that's going to increase their star rating. Um, if they're communicating with you, right? If they stop communicating with you, then it goes down a star. Uh, Again, looking at properties, uh, if they're looking at properties and talking to you. So all of these things are are updating so that way you can be served up with like these potentially hot leads, right? So you can filter in here for your star rating. So it's in this contact details section. So in my contact details section, like one thing I might wanna do is look at the rating. So again, contact details and the rating. And I might want to keep an eye, do I have any five star contacts and apply that filter? Now, what I expect to see here are clients. I expect to see contract. I expect to see closed. If I have a sphere who is a five star person, it's definitely worth an outreach because again, maybe they've been in their house for a long time and they're communicating with me and they're visiting my website those are definitely people to keep an eye on if they're in my sphere and just kind of touch base because I don't want my sphere to work with a different agent because I forgot to tell them I want to work with them, right? A lot of agents will miss those opportunities because we don't, we feel weird talking to our friends, right? Telling them, hey, I should be your agent. Don't feel weird. That's part of the, it's part of the thing, part of the game. Um, so if anyone in my sphere has a five-star or four-star rating, I'm reaching out for sure. Right, I'm gonna just have that conversation. And then I might make notes about it. So I you know, do or do not reach out again, 
or I might go and like manually change their star rating to something lower. Um, but that's definitely something I would do. Additionally, I would look and see, um, you know, I can stack these. So if I have anyone who's like four stars or even three stars and they're a prospect, a new lead or an active lead, and I apply that filter and these people, maybe not three stars, three stars are about ready to be active. Um, but yeah, here's all my five star active leads. So I wanna make sure that I'm talking to them on a regular basis. Right. And so do I know anyone who's a five star or even a four star lead? Do I know their time frame? Like if I don't know their time frame, that's going to be one of the first things I want to know about. Um, the best way to find someone's time frame, they might not even know it. So like start big picture, like, hey, so you've been looking at a lot of properties. Like, that's great. Yeah, cool. Like, are you are you looking to buy right now? No, I'm just browsing, just browsing. Totally. Uh, you know, if you wanted to get into a new home, like through your browsing, are you thinking like next, next year then? Yeah, I'm thinking next year. Okay, now I have more data, right? Or they're like, no, you know, two years, or, you know, I really am just looking, we actually just moved here. Cool, but I'm having that conversation and I start big, you know, this year or next year. And then once I know this year or next year, then I can kind of, then I can ask them like, what season? Like, oh, are you thinking you want to be settled before Christmas, uh, before the new year? Uh, do you want to, like, before the kids start school again in the fall, like, kind of help them narrow it down? Because a lot of people don't actually know. Um, five stars probably do, but like a three star might not know when they want to move, right? But help them start to figure that out. So that's the star rating. Love the star rating. Again, you can update that. You can use your filters to find those people and start having good conversations with them. So our next cool automation, and I realized I forgot to unmute you all. I'm just here talking to myself. I apologize. So I'm gonna change it so you can unmute yourself if you're here live, if you are watching the YouTube playlist, sorry. So feel free to chat in or unmute yourself. Any questions that you have, I Almost got you all. There you are. Okay, so any questions, feel free to you know raise your hand, interrupt, use that chat, any of that good stuff. For example, like how many of you knew about the star rating system within KV Core? No, so I knew about this. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no. No, I knew about the star rating, um, uh -huh. but I have a question. Yeah. actually because you're on it but now when when everything pops up how do you get a notification because i know i've had one before where i didn't even know that somebody was on there and it was like a like a two star but i didn't know until i actually went on the system to check so is there like yeah. a way to so neither of the two things i just talked about would notify you so like validation just happens automatically mm -hmm. um you could go into your smart campaign, right? Your your smart campaign and add a task for yourself, like a day in, like check validation, Sorry. something like that would be a good I thing know. to do. Okay. Um, and then as for the star rating, we don't notify that either. And so that might be um, a good idea to, got a little bit of background, um, add that into your workflow too. So like for me, when I coach and train KV Core, I'm all about building workflows because we all want habits, right? So like my habit that I train people on is logging in because that's step one uh, and working your dashboard. So your activity, your calls and your tasks because that's what's served up for you today. Like there's a purpose for all of these things being here. Um, and then it's all about drumming up something new and your path could be drumming up something new today by focusing on new leads by doing a squeeze page every day, or it could be going to the marketplace today. So that could be how you're drumming up something new. It's getting actual new people, or you could be drumming up something new, kind of more the engagement route. Um, in a healthy business, we're doing both, right? I might do like focus one, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I focus on new leads, Wednesday, Thursday, engagement. We wanna be doing both eventually, um, but by drumming up engagement, I talk a lot about, um, 
either powering up your automations or I call it um, touching your smart CRM. I want everyone to touch their smart CRM every day might not be you know, realistic for you and your time or anything like that. But um, in my ideal brain, you do your dashboard, you touch your CRM. And when I say touch your CRM, I mean that you run a filter for something and then you reach out to those people. And so, you know, to your point, there's not a notification. And so you might have a saved filter of people who are, um, you know, three stars, Right. And then your workflow, and I'm just kind of making this up as I go. So as people have three stars, right, I might just give them that hashtag. So let me just do that hashtag three stars. And the reason I'm thinking this, like kind of like as I go out loud. So then I could say, okay, anyone with three stars, but they don't have the three star hashtag. So that would be new people who have three stars. So now I'm going to get my one person who has three stars, but doesn't have that hashtag. So that means to me, I didn't know they had three stars. So this is a new person on this list for me to work through. So that was definitely something I thought up on the spot. That might be a workflow for you that um, works and is effective. Um, it you could be, uh, you know, I like the idea of saving a filter prospects, new leads, and active leads. If I have someone who is like a four or five star rating and apply that filter, like these are definitely people that I want to keep an eye out on. Um, and make, if, they're, if I'm using my active lead smart campaign, I'm checking my active leads every week anyway. Um, so that might be something to keep an eye out on, but you're right. Star ratings, we don't notify. It's definitely a fine line of, we want to notify you of what's important. Um, but we don't notify you too much because then everything becomes hazy. Uh, if you would find value in being notified of like an increase of a star rating, definitely let us know via our support. Uh, support, we're always taking feature requests that will help you grow your business. So I could definitely see how that could help you grow your business. So I opened my chat, I scrolled down and share my product ideas. So, uh, you know, star rating notification, when a contact gets three stars or a contact goes to increases to four stars, I want to be notified so I can follow up on this hot lead, right? So something like that. So good question. That was a long answer. <laughs> Go through. Uh, yeah, good call. Uh, you. Susan, I, yeah, you're welcome. Susan, I see that you have questions about landing pages. So we'll hold that um, till we finish like our topic at hand and then we'll open to totally open Q&A. So I love that. We'll talk landing pages for sure. All right, so our next autopilot, we actually do notify you about. So <laughs> it's behavioral automation. Now, I did have behavioral automation listed on the things that you might know about already, but there's like two pieces to this. So that's why I wanted to point this out to you today. So behavioral automation can be turned off or on from an individual person. So if Olivia here should not get behavioral automation, I can go to the more actions on the right hand side of her and I can turn off her behavioral alerts. Okay. Or vice versa, if she's off, I could come in here and turn them on. For most of us, behavioral alerts, we're just going to manage them by status. But if I wanted to do it individually, I wanted to show you that. So, what are they? Behavioral automations and behavioral alerts are where. KV Core is again tracking their behavior behind the scenes and then letting you know that there's something hot. That's usually what we think about when we think about behavioral automations. Uh, if you do look at our success meetups, there is a whole hour on behavioral automations because I did it. So I know that that one's in there for sure. Um, but the other piece of behavioral automation, so if I look at marketing, I have my behavioral automations, the last one on here, and I click get started. So behavioral automations work off the idea 
that there are behaviors that you want to know about, right? So, and it's a very specific list of behaviors. You don't have to guess. Um, it's right here if I scroll down. I kind of like to view this a little bit better in the support article. It just looks a little bit cleaner to me. Um, so if a lead revisits my KV Core website after not being there for two weeks, I want to know about that. Like that's a hot behavior. Um, if they are viewing five properties in a day, that's a hot behavior. If they're favoriting a property, again, hot behavior. So for all of these behaviors, if they uh, oh the other side that activity, that way. then I want to make sure that I know about it. And so with behavioral alerts, you're notified. So that's what we're looking at here in KV Core. Here's the behavior. And is the agent going to be alerted when that happens? Yes. If you are getting too many alerts, you can just turn this off. This does not stop the other part of behavioral automation, which is we then reach out to the contact. This does not stop that. So when I'm here looking at behavioral alerts, turning off the agent alert does not stop the actual process. It just stops me from being informed. So we have some agents that you know are really powered up. All their contacts are on search alerts. They have thousands of contacts. They are getting too many alerts. It's too much. The cool thing with these alerts is they are outreach and they are designed to get that person to reach back out to you. So the agents with like thousands of leads all on search alerts triggering all these behaviors, they don't need to know about the outbound. Right, like think about it when you send mailers, you don't necessarily track, I mean, you might, but you know, if you're doing like a, um, a, 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 I can't remember the acronym, but every, every door direct, e -D -D, I don't know. if you're doing like an every door mailer, you're not necessarily going to like track every single one, you know, but you want to know when they reach out to you, right? I want to be able to know who is interested. And I do that by putting my phone number in there. I do that by putting my email address in there, my website, right? So I'm not necessarily, not that I don't care, but I don't care about the outreach. I care about who's coming back. Like if I'm fishing, I put, you know, if I'm mass fishing, I have like 15 lines out. I only care about the one that actually gets a fish. So that's what's happening here. Like I'm putting lines out by sending a text to a person. And I only care about the ones that are coming back to me, you know? So that's behavioral alerts. And I can manage the whole process based on status. So I definitely want this on for my new leads. If a new lead uh, revisits my website, I definitely want outreach to happen and I want to know about it. Um, my active leads, uh, if they are visiting my site five times in a week, I want outreach and I want to know about it. Prospects, same thing, outreach and I want to know about it. Sphere, I have been training KB Core for five years and whew, <laughs> five years, and it's split for all the agents I talk to. Like literally half the agents I talk to say this is perfect for my sphere. Of course, I want this on happening, running. And the other half are like, that's too salesy. No, thank you. So you get to choose. You can turn this off or on for the whole status right here. You can also go to the individual like I showed you and turn it off or on there for them. So that's one of the bigger portions that is known here in KV Core um, of behavioral alerts. The one that's like the one you might not know about that I, I like a lot is the behavioral automation, which looks at those statuses, right? So we kind of talked very briefly about our statuses. Um, our new leads are new, our prospects are interested in real estate, they're not ready right now. Um, they're like longer term. And then active leads are talking to me. I like to call those three my money-making statuses. The more people I have there, the more people can go down the funnel. And once they are working with me, they become a client, right? That's the goal, to get everyone to become a client. So thinking about smart campaigns, my new lead campaign is high touch frequency and I am on a fact finding mission and I'm trying to build up brand awareness. Right? That's why I call so often in the first two weeks 
That's why there's so many emails and texts in the first two weeks, because I want them to know I'm not a junk phone number. I'm Christina Hampton, Inside Real Estate Realtor, you know? So that's my new lead. I don't know anything about them. They haven't really talked to me yet. My prospects, the people, the looky-loos or the people on their long-term, if either of those people start talking to me, and by talking to me, I mean they respond to a text. That could be a smart campaign text. By talking to me, it could be they respond to an email, which could be this email right here because they did a hot behavior. By talking to me, it could be they answered my phone call or called me back or I logged a call that we've had. So once they start talking to me, I don't really want all of that canned stuff happening. I want to be in charge. And so that's what this behavioral automation does. When a new lead or a prospect responds, KV Core will automatically update their status to active. And the reason is, let me show you the active lead smart campaign that exists. So the active lead smart campaign that exists for buyers, sellers, or renters, so let me go here. Go. There's nothing canned in these three campaigns, the default ones. All these campaigns are, so once someone becomes an active lead, it's a once a week check-in reminder because you don't wanna forget them, but you don't wanna be canned with them anymore either because there's actually a conversation that has happened. So one thing you could do is update this first task in here that says, hey, this was an automatic change review and see like should they stay here should you put them back onto new lead should they go to prospects are they just looking different things like that um quick note if you don't want to uh create your own smart campaigns but you're looking for something a little bit more custom than uh what we provide um and something a little bit more tailored something with a little bit more specificity maybe an active lead that actually already tells you to do that, I would recommend checking out our done for you services. For those of you who regularly come to these success meetups, you already know Heather pretty well. Um, she is the director of that department, I believe. Um, and so they have in the marketplace under that done for you, there she is or they are, there's a team, um, these situational smart campaigns. So it's like taking our default ones, but putting them up a notch. And so I believe that the active campaign that she does, does have that suggestion already in it. Like the first action is, hey, this was an probably an automated process, check in. Hey, make sure they're on search alerts. And here's a reminder on how to do that. So all things you can do, but I think it's really cool. Um, if you just want one, then you can always go to the consultation service and talk to her about, you know, I don't know if they do pricing on a campaign by campaign basis, but if you ever don't wanna make your own campaigns for something, that's a pretty good option for you. All right, so that's behavioral automation, the two pieces. One, letting you know that a hot behavior has happened and that there has been outreach. Um, so your notification literally says, uh, you know, Kelly triggered this behavior and a text message was sent or, Can I ask you know, a question. Yeah, please do. Okay. I, I'm certainly not going to pay somebody to do something I can do myself. Now, my yeah. understanding is I looked at some of the campaigns and the wording is very obvious AI or, or just like, doesn't sound like me. Um, my understanding of how to edit is that we make a clone and then we edit. And then what do we do after that? What do we do with the clone? The clone is now the one that you're using. So um, let's let's take that active lead, for example. So if I have, oof, mine's just a, sorry, my demo account's a big mess. So let's take the default closed. Let me pull that one up. So you're absolutely right. So I have this default closed and I click on it and it's scoped or owned by the company. So I can't make any changes here. And you are right, I clone it first. So I'm making this copy. 
I'm going to leave everything the same. Again, we have lots of training on this. Um, I like to put my initials in here so I know that it's mine. So now I have a campaign that's scoped for the user. I'm the user, so that means that I own this. I make any changes that I want to. And then my last step is I make this active. That is turning on your campaign. And so now, since this is my closed status, now as I add a new person to the closed status, this campaign is the one that will trigger, not the company one. So my new people will all start flowing onto this one. So if I hit the blue edit button on that clone, I will actually be able to edit what it's saying. Mm -hmm. Yep. So okay. if I click edit, here's the template. So if I wanted to, and here's the template name. So I don't know, just for quick and easy, I just delete that sentence. I do have to now name it a new template. So one month post close, but mine, my initials. And then I save. And there we go. Now I've edited that campaign to make it sound more like me. Yeah. And I agree with you. I'm a big fan of, you know, it depends on who you are and what you're doing and what your skill set is and interest and all that. Absolutely. If you have the time, energy, desire, skill set to just do this on your own, absolutely. Lots of people would rather just pay someone else. And that's fine too. Um, so either one, I'm a big, I like that we have options to pretty much do everything for free, but we also have options to outsource. So good call out. Yeah, good question. All right, so our last little known that you might not know about is daily call creation. Um, I love daily call creation. It is hands down my favorite feature of KV Core. So if you've been on a training with me, you might know about it because I do bring it up fairly often. So daily call creation goes, you know, just like pretty much everything we've been talking about today is what is KV Core doing behind the scenes to serve up to you a list of hot leads, to serve up to you opportunities to engage with people. Like that's really the, the overall theme of what's happening behind the scenes to give you opportunities to engage with people who are probably going to engage back with you. So daily call creation um, is where we look at a specific list of behaviors. And the reason I like this so much is because it's your behavior and your leads behavior that we're looking at. Um, again, this list of behaviors is, it, it is set in stone. We're just gonna look at the support article because I think it's really easy to look at from here. Um, so we're going to look and see, have any of your contacts triggered those behavior alerts that we just looked at? If they've done that in the last 24 hours and you haven't called them in the last week, we're going to put that on your schedule of people to call today. Um, the contact viewed a property in the last six months, if you haven't called them in a month, they're going to be on your call list for today. Um, the contact was created in the last 90 days. So they're still pretty new and you aren't calling them. Like, new leads when they're brand new that you have some brand recognition now's the time to talk to them uh, the contact has never been called let's call them uh, they have a rating of three stars or more so it all kind of flows in together but you're not calling them now it's served up for you so the contact has responded to a text so you know it's a valid phone number but you still aren't calling them uh, contacts do have to have be subscribed to calls um, so it's, we're not going to serve any calls to you that you can't technically make because they're unsubscribed. Um, and if the contact has not missed a call from the agent previously, so um, we don't want to keep re-giving you the same person over and over again um, with at least uh, without a break in there. So there's two ways to edit. The things that you can edit on here are how many calls we're going to schedule for you. The default setting is 10. You should make at least 10 calls a day uh, in, in real estate. So we try to make that easy for you. Here's your 10. Um, you can't, if you don't have 10 there, then that's why you go and touch your CRM, find people to call there too. Uh, so you can edit how many calls we're scheduling for you and also the time of the day that we schedule those for you. So you can do that in two places. One is in your profile. I personally prefer to just do it right on my dashboard. So if I go to my call list, for the day, I can see it's not shiny, 
but it's my favorite thing. So if I click edit settings, I can decide, do I, this is set to create calls for me each day. And it's currently off on weekends, right? You probably have enough to do on weekends. You are probably doing showings, holding open houses, listing appointments, things like that. Um, if you don't have enough to do on weekends yet, go ahead and toggle weekends on and we'll give you calls for the weekends too. It defaults to those money-making statuses, my prospects, my new leads, and my active leads. I can add some other statuses in here, and I do need to double check myself real quick because we don't do all of them. Let me check my logic. Yeah, so I can add sphere to here, right? The other ones, it, it, won't, it won't pull. Um, or I could do client, right? Hopefully you're calling your clients on a regular basis and you don't need a reminder, but just in case. Um, and I could also put sphere on here as well. Uh, the people, again, they have to be subscribed to phone, uh, to phone calls. They have to have a phone number. Um, so I like to add my sphere on here. This is an excellent alternative if you like aren't using our sphere smart campaign or if you just want something extra. You can decide how many, like 10 should be your minimum uh, of phone calls. You can bump it up. And then what time are we going to give you this list um, of phone calls? So 6.45, then I get a 6.45 a.m. email sent my way. I love that, save that, and then I'll see my list. And also it'll show you exactly why you're calling them. So we have Charlie and he's not been called in a month and he does have five stars or Chelsea has never been called. Same thing with Barbara. Now you'll get notified. You get this daily email, looks like this. If you have never received this email, make sure that you add this email address that I'm putting into the chat as a contact. And I'm also gonna put that on our outline in the challenge section, save. Okay, so this will tell me my new leads, if I have any tasks for today, and if I have any calls today. This also shows me if there was any of those, um, that status change from my behavioral alerts. So anyone who is suddenly an active lead that I didn't know about before is gonna be on this email. So you can Excuse check me. in, yeah. Where do we put this? It says no dash reply KV core. You said in our context. Do we do it? We put it in the context in KV core, or do we put it in context of our own email or of your own email? Thank you. Yes, of your of your own email for sure. Um, so you can go to your settings if you'd like, and you can add contacts from there. Um, click those little. I'm in I'm in Google. I don't know Microsoft Outlook as well. Um, but if you go to your contacts here and you can add a contact it's also just it's a good this is not the technical term but it's like a way to a uh, white label or yeah, white list i don't remember but basically make sure like i know this person don't ever send them to spam kind of a thing yeah good good call out good question for sure all right so those are the the four little cool automations that you might not know about that I'm a big fan of, especially daily call creation. I nerd out about it. Um, so now let's enter our open Q&A. So let's see, is Susan still here? You did ask questions about landing pages. So Susan, what landing page questions do you have for me? Okay, so I'm very new at this and I've I think I'm actually going to definitely have the done for you services. Is it done for you services just a one payment or is it an annual? I don't know. It, um, it depends on what you get from them. Um, so if I look at the marketplace, so the way done for you works, there we go. So we have things that have just been like really popular. So okay. situational campaign, super popular. So we just made it easy. If this is what you want, get started. Um, if you're thinking about those, also look at this setup service because this includes those situational campaigns, plus has um, some like branding and some a website 
stuff done too. But is that a one-time fee or is that like every month? Those two are one-time fees. Um, the newsletters and the blogs, those are going to have recurring fees because you okay. can do, depending on what you want. Like if you just want them to make a newsletter template for you and you make your newsletter every month with that really pretty template, then you would actually go potentially to like a, a consultation. But we've pulled out what we found since we launched this is like, these are kind of the recurring things that people are really into. So instead of also charging a consult fee for that, we just said, okay, if you want a branded holiday campaign, you can just click that you want to get started. We'll update it every year for you also. So you don't have to worry about that. So okay. some of these are going to have recurring fees and some aren't. So good question. Okay. See, because yeah. I'm coming from Commission Zinc. Now my mm -hmm. whole um, CSV has already been implemented. I tried doing my profile, but I'm, I want to also have like my landing pages linked to the previous domain that I had, if that makes mm. any sense. And mm. I don't know how to do it. It's been, it's going on two weeks and I'm a little bit anxious because I don't want to lose my data. Like I don't want to lose my clients. Yeah. Um, so who can call me? I've been trying to put in e-tickets. I really need, I really need help. Like I, if I have to pay, I will, but I wanted to know if it was a one-time or if it's always, I just really need someone to please help me because I'm not tech savvy. Yeah. So who would you recommend, please? I would, I would come here. I would do this um, consult or Megan, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> Megan is one of our people. Do you okay. know Megan? Oh, oh, I think she just left. Oh, bummer. Um, if there's a direct link for coaching, I would do this. I would do the consult. Um, okay. And for your website, yeah, so you already the have, landing you already page. have a domain. Well, it's supposed to be, I believe, Susan dot or Susan Chazzy dot iPro Realty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yep, I wanted my domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wanted my the dominating one that I that came from Commission Zinc. Mm -hmm. It's I've had it for a very long time, like yeah. for over five years. Um, I don't want to lose that. So I wanted to have it linked, one domain linked to the other domain. So there was no interruption. And mm -hmm. also to make sure that the leads that I have will continue to have the IDX access. Yeah, so they'll still have IDX access. But so looking at the domain, so that domain was that directly through sync or is it something that you purchase separately through like a GoDaddy or something GoDaddy. like that? Okay. It came Perfect. from GoDaddy. But Perfect. okay, so with the domain and also like I have to send out letters, I mm -hmm. guess. What is the cost? Let's Signature? do one thing at a time. So yeah. first we want to forward your domain from GoDaddy. And yes. so you will want to go into GoDaddy to handle that. And let me grab you a support article. For that. Okay, so what I did, I went to our support articles. Let me just show you what I did. So we have a ton of articles for you in this support and training section. And okay. so I clicked on see all articles on KV Core. Okay. And then I know we have this article, you might not know, but there's this search section here. And so I just typed in GoDaddy and hit enter. And so you might need to read a couple of these if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, but I know that this is the one that you want, right? Okay. So you, your domain host, such as GoDaddy, you have the option of domain forwarding. I'm like, okay, that's great. That's yeah. definitely the article that I want. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put this into chat. So anyone who's here live can click on this. Anyone who's watching the replay, I just showed you how to get here. And so you are going to, this is for admin, so you don't need that portion. You are gonna scroll down to domain forwarding. And so when you're doing that 
since you already own the domain, uh, right. your domain host is GoDaddy, you have the option of domain forwarding. So when that happens correctly, what will happen when someone visits that personalized domain? So when you already have, they're immediately redirected to your new KV course subdomain. And right. so we are going to click here for instructions on how to forward a domain in GoDaddy. So I'm going to put this in the chat as well. And so this will show you exactly from GoDaddy how to forward and they can help you. They work with us all the time. So if you do need any help, we can help you. Here is one key feature that you'll want to write down. You want to do a 301 redirect. So there's different forwarding types. You absolutely want a 301 redirect without masking. And when you go through to do it, it'll be very clear. So if right now you're like, that sounds like Greek, just write it mm. down. <laughs> 301 without masking. Okay. So that means that someone will type in your current domain. It will forward to your KV core domain, and then it will switch to your KV core domain at the top. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. I need someone to do it for me. Uh, then done for you. Not 100% sure. We are not in the habit of logging into other people's accounts. So I'm not sure that that is physically something we can do for you specifically. But I will tell you that lots of people with your level of tech comfort <laughs> reach out to GoDaddy and they help them. So I can tell you that. Is there anything that I have to give GoDaddy, like in terms of, uh, I don't know, a code or ID or anything? Nope. You'll just want to know what your KV Core subdomain is, which you can see if you click your name in the top right corner and you'll see it right there. That'll my, be your okay. Subdomain. So what's my subdomain? Is it? Uh... It'll be the third item down. It'll be the one that has like this little globy, okay. oh, globy setting. Okay. With the global mm -hmm. setting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question. Um, I did have a couple other hands up. So um, Emily, what what can I help you with, Emily? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Or Larry, I see your hand up too, and we are over on time. So I want to. Oh, I'll be quick. This is Ann, Larry's wife. Um, just a quick question, and also GoDaddy will do it for her. He'll they'll do it. They'll, Perfect. So Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Um, if I'm sending out a newsletter and I already did one, um, how can I tell, can I tell if people have opened it or not? Possibly, which I know isn't the best answer. Um, I say possibly because what you can do is on your dashboard here, there's two ways to see. So under all activity, mm -hmm. there is a drop down menu and on the bottom, there's an email event. So this will show you that an email has been opened. Now I'm phrasing it that way very carefully because almost a year ago now, iPhone delivered a, released an update. And so what that update does, it's designed to combat spam. It's a great thing for you know consumers. Um, and it, you don't even know, like if you have an iPhone, you don't, can't even tell this is happening, but it is, opening your emails to see if it's spam. And so sometimes when I look here, um, like this email has been opened. I don't actually know if Christina opened it or if it was her iPhone. So it's like a grain of salt. Um, take it with a grain of salt, I mean. So I can see that it has been opened. I don't necessarily know that it was her, but what I can tell, so this one was opened and clicked, which means that this had a link in it and they clicked on that link. So if your newsletter has links in it, that's, you know, you still might send them a newsletter and they don't click the link. Um, but if it's opened and clicked, then you know it was a person um, that's doing that. So you can kind of tell, but again, with that new you know, Apple change, little grain of salt. The other way is individually. So if I um, go into a lead detail record like Samantha here, and I see her whole history and we see my past due call, <laughs> I see this email was sent to Samantha and then on the right, the email has not been opened. 
And so as I scrolled down, I could see that this one was open. So again, not 100% sure that it was Samantha and not her iPhone. I can look at this and say, okay, she then clicked on properties from that property alert. So she probably clicked this, but I can't guarantee that. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, you're welcome. All right, well, thank you all for coming. Lots of great questions today. I love it. Um, again, we will post this recording both in our Facebook group. So if you haven't joined that yet, definitely recommend it. Um, it'll also be on our YouTube playlist of KV Core Success Meetups. And we have this lovely little outline that I shared at the beginning of today, complete with like all the links that I shared, at least the ones that were on topic. Uh, and I'll put the recording link in here as well at the bottom. So um, the other thing I'm going to add here is we have in-depth webinars on these big three. So I'll throw those in there too. So that way, you know, it's going to be a nice resource for you. So thank you all for coming. I love doing these. I'm here almost every Thursday. Uh, I'll see you all online. I have thank a question. You. What's the Facebook name? Yeah, name. let me grab a link. That is actually on here as well. Okay. Let's get social, the Inside Real Estate Success Strategies Group. Okay. Let me grab that link. I'll put that in the chat too for those of you who are live. Yeah, great question. Inside thank Real you. Estate Discussion Group. Thank discussion you. Group. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.